Morning guys, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What we're going to do this morning is continue with our basic series on tarp setups. And we talked about a wedge or a plow point type shelter. We've talked about an open front lean type shelter with an overhang. The next thing we need to talk about is flying a tarp. And flying a tarp means that all four sides or all four corners of that tarp are going to be off the ground. And that can be done whether it is in a pup tent type configuration of a square where you've just got that square over the middle of the line and all four corners are, are ran out. Or it can be used in a diamond configuration where you've got the tarp in a diamond shape and you've got two wings on each side and the two corners pulled out in the middle. Either way, you can fly a tarp. Flying a tarp comes in advantageous for a couple different things. Remember that when we're setting up any type of shelter configuration, whether it be a natural shelter or a shelter with a tarp, the three things that we are trying to look at the three factors that we need to understand are conduction, convection, and radiation. Those are the three things that we need to control or manipulate depending on our environment, season, temperatures, prevailing winds, and weather. Okay, so we have our cordage with our loop jam tied in, and we're going to put that around our tree. That's going to be the first tree at the height we want our ridge line, and that's going to depend on whether you're going to put a hammock underneath this tarp or whether you're just sleeping under this tarp. So we're going to put this thing about waist level because that's about what I like for shelter lines. Now, what we're doing is we're pulling this tight against a tree on that loop jam and we've created a slot right here where that loop jam locks into it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the first corner of our tarp right through that loop jam right there, just like that. Pull a stake out of our pocket and shove it in there. Remember, we've got four stakes. So we shove that in and we pull this down against the tree. That corner of that tarp is jammed in there and it can't move. Okay, so when we come to the other side, we'll go ahead and get our step off that we talked about before, our arm's length, and we'll make our loop in there for our trucker's hitch. We'll come right around and grab that, yank against that, trucker's hitch pulling loop just like this we'll lock it in we'll come over the top and we'll pull it tight now that gives us this adjustable loop right here and that's going to be important for our next corner all right now we're going to come down and pull our tarp over the top and right here is the corner of our tarp and we're going to loosen that loop up enough to get it through the loop in the other corner of our tarp just like this shove a stake in there pull it down as tight as it needs to go in this case it just happened to go all the way against the knot but it's plenty tight and then we're going to put one more half hitch in here just like we did on our trucker's hitch for security that gives us two loops that we can pull straight out of this line, but it's not going to come loose. Now when we go to tie this thing off in the corners to get our tarp flying or up off the ground, it doesn't matter whether we're using a stake or whether we are using a tree. It works the same way. You've got that end of the line jam loop in one end of your line and you just have a knot in the other end, just like we had on our ridge line. And all I'm doing is running this entire line straight through the loop, the tie-out loop on this tent. So basically I have two lines that will move because I have it directly through that loop. Now I'm just going to take the loop end, the jam loop end, put it around the object I want to tie off to, whether that's a tree or whether that's a stake. Put the other end through that loop and this becomes my tensioning loop now as if I were doing the same trucker's hitch that we did on the tree. So we'll pull this down, pinch that together, reach through and grab it. And now we have that exact same type knot that we put on the tree with our ridge line on our stake or on our tree or whatever object we're tying off to. It becomes a very quick and up and down knot and it's very easily adjustable. If I let this down, all I have to do is let the tension off of it. I can bring that rope down to get it closer to the ground and just retie that knot again. And it takes no time at all to do that. So no matter where I want to move that to, I've created something that I can use to tighten and retighten or set that thing up any way I need to to get it the proper height. 
and it's very quick to go up and down. Or maybe I want to stake it straight to the ground. I just want to get this out real quick and shove a stake through that loop. I've still got two stakes left. Okay, so at this point we have flown our tarp. The tarp is not tied down to the ground on any of the four corners. It's up in the air. That gives us the maximum advantage that we can take of convection. It's going to let all the breeze come through here. There's nothing blocking any wind on any four sides. We can sleep directly on the ground in a setup like this, or if we fly this tarp higher, we can put a hammock underneath here. We'll talk more about that stuff in a later video. But this is a good basic tarp setup. The last tarp setup I want to show you in this tarp setup stuff is I want to show you how to make just a tube tent style setup, and it's probably the simplest of all. Stay with me. Okay, to set up your typical A-frame Boy Scout style shelter, you're just going to go ahead and run your loop through on your loop jam just like we did before. And then I'd step off the tree a good ways considering you've only got a seven foot tarp. And just take a loop in the line just like this and put it through your center tie out loop just like this. And then just put yourself a toggle in there. Obviously if you've only got four stakes you're not going to be able to use a stake. But if you've got six you can use a stake for this. And then pull it tight and go down to the other end and tie your trucker stitch on the other end. So on this end, all we're going to do is the same thing we did before. We're going to step off a little bit here, twist our line over, pull it through, and get our tightening loop, our tensioning loop for our trucker stitch. Take our line back through it, tighten it down on the tree, just like that. Get it the right height. And then again, same thing. We're just going to go ahead and tie that loop in there. Now this loop here is going to give you the other end of what you're going to use to tighten your tarp down. So on this end, all we're going to do is the same thing we did before. We're going to step off a little bit here, twist our line over, pull it through, and get our tightening loop, our tensioning loop for our trucker stitch. Take our line back through it, tighten it down on the tree, just like that. Get it the right height. And then again, same thing. We're just going to go ahead and tie that loop in there. Now this loop here is going to give you the other end of what you're going to use to tighten your tarp down. So now just throw your tarp over the top. Just like this. Come down and take this loop and put it through just like you did before. And again, if you're only carrying four stakes, you're gonna have to put a toggle in there. So just pick yourself a stick up off the ground and shove it in there as a toggle. And then just pull that down tight, just like that. And that's gonna give you a tight hitch right there. Okay. So when we're done, this is what we got. Now we've got just a regular pup tent style tent that we can get inside of crawl in there and go to sleep. This is not going to be near as effective at taking advantage of convection if you're looking for a breeze as flying the tarp, but this will take more of an advantage of trying to keep heat in with a low ridge line and these sides down, you're going to stay warm in a shelter like this. So it just depends on your environment, the weather, and what you're trying to do and how you're trying to manipulate conduction, convection, and radiation so that you get the best night's sleep. We're going to talk about how to get a good night's sleep in the next part of this series. Okay folks, well I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here today for another video on basic tarp setups. We're going to continue with this series and go into how to get a good night's sleep in our next video. I appreciate your views, appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, my family, friends, sponsors, and affiliates. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.